The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, now has a choice whether he wants to return to the PDP. Of course, uh, former Vice President Hachik Abubakar is saying that he will support and step down for Peter Obi if the PDP microzones the presidency to the southeast. Is this coming too little too late? Or is this a great opportunity for a possible 2027 comeback? This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Obodo. You're welcome to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV. It's a program that X-rays the political, social and economic developments around us. Is Peter B going back to the PDP? And will the carrot be dangled by former Vice President Atika Abubakar be enough? to lure him back if they offer him the ticket in 2027. To help us make sense of these and more issues around the political circles within the country, I'm joined by Dr. Augustine Okolie. Dr. Augustine Okolie is a policy and management consultant and also the former, co former director of National Orientation Agency here in Enugu State. Thank you so much, Dr. Okolie, for joining me on the Eastern Night. Thank you for having me one more time. Of course. This wouldn't be the first time we're hearing whether Peter B should go back to the PDP or you should find another political party. But if, when you listen to Atiku Abubakar say something like, if the PDP microzones to the southeast that he will step down for Peter B, meaning that he's still interested to be president. So it's a question of if it's microzoned to the southeast. What's your take on that? <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, uh, the PDP, uh, where Atiku Abubakar, the former presidential candidate, or the incumbent presidential candidate of uh, PDP, and uh, his former vice presidential candidate in 2019, uh, Peter Obi. Uh, the truth uh, of the matter is that uh, Peter was just looking for a proposed vehicle uh, to uh, try his luck. Uh, a special purpose vehicle that uh, will pre present himself to the populace of Nigerians to see whether uh, his swan song, his campaign rhetoric, his intentments, whether they will manifest, whether they will now have his choice. Ordinarily, uh, you see, when you look at the way the things are zoned, position, particularly the presidency, essentially it was supposed to be the southeast. Uh, so whichever party should have been southeast, like we went southwest in 1999. But then there was an elephant there in the house, uh, the behemoth, uh, the elephantine uh, Yeso Mwike, was actually the truth, the man that uh, denied the southeast uh, that uh, ticket. I think Abu Bakr uh, even said it then, I uh, it is my zone to the southeast that will not contest uh, for the presidency. Uh, because uh, the uh, Wilke boys, who are the zoning uh, committee members, both the presidency and the party, so they tried to throw it open to let Wilke try his luck. Uh, essentially, they were thinking it was easy. They are going to overrun Atiku Abubakar. They are going to get a ticket and even win. Uh, because uh, that was the closest uh, they could come. I remember in the past, in 2015 and 2019, uh, most of the winners of the presidency uh, came from 15 to 18 million votes. Uh, then those who came second from 10 to 12 million votes. Unlike what happened in 2023, 8 and 6 and 6. So you can see that the votes of PDP was split, 6 and 6, at Tuka and Dobi, uh, that the APC couldn't have come back. But it was a self-inflicted injury. Uh, I think what they should do is to let Nigerians uh, breathe. 
because the APC government are thoroughly on our neck. Uh, without uh, missing words, everybody knew that um, eight years of Muhammad Buhari government was uh, very severe on the people. And um, the incumbent president, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I told us he was going to continue from where he stopped. So the choice was left for uh, PDP to make, uh, for the Nigerians to make. So if um, for adventure, uh, the opposition uh, political parties uh, could come back and re strategize and um, take the yoke off the neck of Nigerians. Then we shall see whatever happens, whether it is P2B or whoever else, uh, APC have inflicted a very uh, serious uh, hardship on Nigerians. So I think Nigerians will have to vote in 2027 between hardship and going back to 2015 and 2000 and, uh, you know, uh, 1999. So it is that choice that we make. So B2B was a swan song. Labour was neither here nor there. It was a beast movement that uh, tried to prove to be the, the top force. Uh, incidentally, they split their vote to just a narrow margin. 866 was uh, the proportion. So if they realize uh, that mistake, if they realize that it should come to the southeast, it should still retain in the south, then I think we'll have to know what to do. And there's some other uh, guys from the north. So it's a very simple arithmetic. Then it will be very contentious. They forget about tribe. They forget about what they listen to what they have to uh, present. Uh, nobody has had it this bad in terms of uh, what APC has given to uh, Nigerians. So I think they have to vote between APC and any other alternative. And uh, Peter B is good, the other guys are also good, but they need to put the house in order. They divided the house and it collapsed on their heads. Mm. Yeah, talking about putting the house in order, the PDP and the Labour Party, they seem not to be having it uh, very rosy at this time. Uh, if you look at the Labour Party, there is this tussle. Uh, Julius Abure, quite a number of the members and the party don't want him to continue as the chairman of the party. In the PDP, they also have their problems. That as we speak, they don't have a substantive uh, party chairman, national party chairman. Does this tell you that maybe actually making a great comeback in 2027 will be something that they really need to work out if they really have to make a good impression in the next general elections, considering that now that Bola Tinubu is president, he will be the man to beat in 2027. Yes, the permutations are there. <clears throat> if you look carefully, you will see that having come from the wild, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu you know, beats everybody to the game. And now he's sitting president. But uh, somebody was sitting president when uh, Buhari uh, beat, uh, you know, President Gulo Jonathan. Yeah, but, but, but the argument now is that for the first time, you probably have a thoroughbred politician. The difference is in the, the political tussles and wars he's been through before emerging as president, that you possibly may not be able to outwit him, politically speaking, comparing him to former President Jonathan and former President Buhari in terms of their ability to outwit those who want to outwit them? Well, uh, before I answer your question, ceteris variables. In economics, <laughs> they say all things being equal. If there is no rigging, if there is no uh, vote buying, if there is no intimidation and violence, I think Nigerians will have to, a clear choice to make. And uh, it will be very, very obvious uh, that uh, this hardship, nobody will choose. Uh, this is what we are getting. The political and economic uh, hardship Nigerians are getting. So it is to vote between this and that. Now, talking about parties uh, not uh, having substantive uh, uh, chairman and so on, you see, PDP has been in power uh, for 16 years. APC has now been in power for uh, eight years plus. That's uh, getting to nine years. So they have had the experience uh, of this issue of family affair. In political party activities, there are always squabbles, there are always conflicts. The, uh, the cutting edge is how you manage uh, the crisis. And uh, you can see that labor, their case is very, very irredeemable because labor will claim they have been there for a the time immemorial. But you can see that without OB, labor is nothing. As far as I'm concerned, without P2B in labor, labor is just simply nothing. Now, 
Uh, APC has even more severe issues. But the difference is that they have a leader. They have a president who can call the shots, who people will look up and respect. But you see, in the other two parties, where there is no pres president, uh, the chairmen are not as strong as the governors that are contributing and sponsoring the party. So that is where the problem lies. PNB has been having problems, but because they had presidents of Olusegu, Abbas, and Jairadua, and Jatan, uh, they will resolve at the table. You can see now that even the current president is trying to resolve what is going on in River State, a PDP uh, state. So it is kind of borrowing parents, borrowing a leader. You can see the resolution that it wasn't uh, sustainable. It has not sustained. It's just like a flash in the pan. They will continue to do that until PDP gets a leader. Now, the, uh, the issue of chairman, I think PDP handled it more maturely. We had a program here, and I was telling you that, look, there's a kind of uh, an elephant in the room, what they say, Chinese uh, shop, China shop, and a, a drunken uh, man inside there. So what they do is that they have to make sure that they don't break all the breakables. So that was the last neck they had. People were saying, oh, Mwike had it, Mwike has won. But you can see that Mwike, it was a temporal uh, pirate victory, that you cannot win your party. One person cannot be stronger and bigger than the entire party, particularly somebody who has just come. Remember, other governors have been sponsoring party. They have been finding a way to sponsor and maintain the balance and be the pillars of PDP. We know the governors that have been doing it from when came. PDP didn't just emerge. And there are some governors, even the president, Olusegun Obasanjo, was not a kind of the major funder. It was PDP because Obasanjo came as father of the nation, as a former army general, where the core uh, uh, politicians knew how to mobilize funds and where to deploy it. Like you mentioned that uh, the current president is a terrible question. He was not absent in the Buhari administration. He, is a core, he was their leader. So all their policies, all their politics, all their whatever happens, he either sends a signal or he comes there in person. Remember when Adam Shoshumole, or he brought Adam Shoshumole, when he knew as chairman of uh, APC, when he knew that, look, this is not going to fly. They have to subsume, they have to step down and allow Adam to come out and prepare for nothing so that it doesn't escalate. Remember they had CPC faction or branch of APC, they have ACN. So there was a thousand of who will have dominion, but it is still on there. Some people are saying, I can hear some people who are saying, oh, those who got the juicy positions are those who came from ACN, ACN and the CPC have lost it now. So that you can see how the former governor of Cardinal State, uh, how he lost, uh, how he was screened out, and how he lost even relevance. And the current chairman of APC, who was the former governor of uh, Kano State. Remember, I made mention of swing states of Kano, Rivers, and Lagos. Now, APC has only Lagos. They don't have Kano. They don't have Rivers. It has like the tripod of uh, 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 PDP in Rivers, APC in Lagos, and then um, uh, the other uh, minor party in Kano. So what they are doing now is that these NMP, those parties, NMP, yes, NMPP. So if they come together, NMPP, remember the discussion that is going on is between NMPP, opposition, the major opposition uh, people. They will come together and they say, let nobody, let no selfish interest come in. Let nobody push himself. Whether we are just talking as you know outsiders, whether Obi is going to get a ticket, whether Atuk is going to surrender. But the truth is that they have to look the interest of Nigerians, the national interest. They, are, they have to see, they have to become patriotic and see how Nigerians are suffering and going through the crossovers. Nothing is not pointing south. Everything, inflation, unemployment, uh, the value of the currency, uh, the politics is bad insecurity everywhere. So we have every reason to politically overthrow the current administration so that all they needed is to do their homework, to come together, to handle their affairs. So but the problem they had in PDP was a man who has two political parties that tend to. He is a minister in the APC, and he is a behemoth in PDP. But you can see that with the erosion going on in uh, River State, he's you know, uh, gradually, uh, tactically uh, trying to uh, retreat because he has nowhere to stand again. Uh, he's the one who is now apologizing and claiming that he made a mistake and so on. So that is where the problem is. So if PDP could truly and find a way to put him in his chair, because if you try help PDP, when you come out, you surrender your structure, 
you surrender your mandate. You don't, uh, you know, go away and take the structure uh, to another place and let the governor stand, you know, without having the structure. You cannot, you don't dash me my rights. Uh, and Nicola Bokuti say, yes. you can't dash us human rights. Human right. So you don't give us, you don't, somebody has been elected, no matter how you play a role, you have to allow him to be. It has happened in most of the states that I have known. It is only that Tinubu didn't happen in Lagos. Happened in Enugu here. Happened in Benue. You know, happened in Kaduna. Happened in, uh, it's still happening in Kanu. So where the, uh, uh, in, uh, the uh, predecessor and the successor, um, love people it. who felt that the power has not left them. Yeah. They left the office, but they still feel like they lost something. Yeah. So they will continue they to... They are clinging yes, to the memory of, think, uh, yes, of power. And, you know, power is transient. You have to understand that power has... You know, it has a timeline. After eight years, you go. And you take your respect. You take your honor. But when you begin to say, I don't want somebody to tamper with my structure, then you now, you know, you have now opened the Pandora box. So the truth is now that if um, the minister of FCT, uh, uh, you know, uh, yes, okay. if he now goes to APC and deals with them trying to help, he says he's not going to contest against the incumbent president. But we want to, if you can be in PDP, all we want is to, all the PDP people want is to remove the president and go Well, to. I mean, that, so if that, you are still working for him, that's then you cannot be in PDP. That's interesting, he's yes. saying that, because he said at the, at the venue of the convention of the PDP, that's the primaries, presidential yes. primaries, that he will support, support whoever emerges. And yes, when, when Atika Abubakar emerged, he didn't support him. So we've heard things like that before, but it's time for us to take a break. When we return from that break, we'll look at what are the possible obstacles to the promise or the carrots that Atiku Abubakar is dangling before P2B? Or uh, are they just the two persons in the room interested for the 2027 ticket? Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV. We are reaching you live from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. My name is Alex Obodo. So let's get back to the discussion. Yeah, I think we can say, yes, I will step down for P2B if he returns to the PDP. But this discussion is being had as if it's only Atiku Abubakar and P2B that are in the equation. That's part of the fact that they said if the microzone to the southeast. Okay, perhaps if the microzone to the southeast. Is it possible that Atiku is thinking that Obi would be the only Southeasterner who is interested in running? Or because he's run before and they suddenly have seen that he's capable of garnering votes from the length and breadth of Nigeria? Well, uh, you see that uh, it's not just a case of uh, trying to um, contest. You can see the waves Obi made. You can see his rhetoric. You can see in full expression wherever he goes, even up to today. Uh, but um, it's not a case of giving. Uh, it will be contested. But it's just like also Arsenal and the Man City. In 2023-2024 uh, football season, it ended uh, Man City Arsenal. This year it ended. It has something to say about the two teams, about who is in charge. I think we started this thing far back at 1992. Contesting for president, it has branches, it has, you know, allies everywhere. It's not easy to win, even when uh, the uh, uh tried everything he can. He won't know that somebody stepped down because they know that they cannot allow uh, Wike to beat Atiku. Those people are still there, not West Vote are still there, not East Vote are still there, not Central Vote, the North has 19 states, for goodness sake, with their delegates. And the South has 17. And let us give Southwest to the president. Southeast voted for Atiku. South South should vote for Atiku. So you can see that, as we speak now, the South South has six uh, states, and it uh, PDP has five. Uh, apart from Cross River, PDP has this South South, South Southeast. You can see that it is Southeast that is coming because of what happened to uh, Sunday. We said, look, if they don't like us, let us go away. But if they now call back and say, let an evil man who is capable of winning, who can deliver, who can properly represent and become an ambassador of the Southeasterners, they will come back and vote for the party. Remember, there are issues of restructuring that people are clamoring for. There are issues of devolution of powers that people are, you know. It was the Southwest 
that you are clamoring one for that. But you can see now they are no longer even as vociferous uh, as they used to be. But it was then, it was a kind of alignment between Southeast and North. Now it is Southwest and North. So the North are always skeptical about restructuring. So we need to interpret and they speak to, so, so that people will now know, you have different interpretations to restructuring of the polity, devolution of power. That's what uh, actually uh, Mr. Pre the past president did in power sector uh, reforms. That is the electricity. Now governors becomes a concurrent uh, lead, enter the concurrent lead, whereby the states can now generate, you know, transmit and also distribute. That is what we are asking, so that every power cannot be concentrated at the uh, national, at the national grid, at the center. That is not federalism. Federalism, both fiscal and political federalism, is such that the components, uh, you know, um, uh, federating units at the states will have to, certain powers have to give to them. So that those who want to crawl will continue to crawl. Those who want to walk will walk, and those who want to fly will have the capacity to fly and set a pace for that. There will be competition. And you know in competition in economics, then you have more efficiency, you have more effectiveness. And Nigerians will just fly and take off from the ground. But as long as they continue to do all this, um, you know, federal character, you know, merit, catchment area, and so Nigeria will not go anywhere. So if somebody who speaks to Atiku there in 2019 was campaigning in the south with a, you know, a restructuring. But when he goes to the north, he, doesn't he, doesn't, he wasn't as vociferous and as you know, forceful as he used to because their people are lethargic in allowing that. But I think it has opened everybody's eye. And you can see Obi is softly campaigning in the north. But some people are now throwing that and mud because he has gone to tell them, look, let me talk to you. This is what I've, I've come to. I'm not a sectional person. I'm not going to go to Biafra if I become president. All these fears have to go away. So time will tell. As the APC uh, presidency and the APC government, National Assembly, you know, takes loan and takes more loan and continue to put Nigeria in, you know, in the doldrums. Our economy is in Fox Power, pointing south, everything. So another alternative party, if they come together like they did in 2015, when opposition parties, some section of new PDP and the Afghans and so on came together and snatched power. So I think that is what uh, we're hoping to replicate in 2027. Hopefully, it may not be OB, but somebody who may even be better than OB. Some people are great men are down south here. Do the proper zoning. Do the right thing. They knew that it was not going to supposed to be to south side, southwest. Most of them have gone there and spent eight years. Vice President Osiban uh, uh, have been there. So it becomes necessary that the South Easterners are even up and doing. They have taken over commerce, they have taken over the economy. You cannot doubt it. That is what's going on in uh, Abuja. That is why the minister there is also trying to do a lot of uh, speed work to cut the South Easterners who have invested. Because the gum that is binding this country together is the Southeast. Wherever they go, they take us home. They are the true believer in one unity, United Nigeria. It is the South Eastern that will come to Lagos and build and carry their family and develop that place from Morocco, Bar Beach to Reiki and everywhere. So that is what they can do. They go to Kano. If you go to Kano, you see that the commerce there, more than 60% of you know, people who are doing business there are from the Southeast. If you come to Abuja, Dito. So if you allow somebody who will now be a true patriotic president, who will not be appointing only his people to strategic places, where the one they call, uh, uh, you know, a plum job, the one they call a juicy positions. Somebody who will now give it to who can do it, who can do it no matter where you come from, who will be blind to tribe and ethnic, you know, sentiments. Nigerians will just leave this they are, where they are now and go to where they're supposed to be. So Nigerians have also, eyes have opened. I can hear some Northerners regretting the, what they, who they voted for. I can even see Rufai running around trying to go to another party and they're trying to even invite Obi to. Obi has become the beautiful bride. I don't know why, maybe what he's saying, maybe what he can do, but the taste of the eating, of the pudding, uh, will always be in the eating. So they have to try him out to know whether he failed. Um, they say Lagos people have promised so many things, but you can see that uh, all that glitters is not gold. Mm. All right, it's time for another quick break here on the Eastern Eye. When we return, we will return to another part of the discussion, of course, finding out what is the Southeast thinking 
about all these permutations, about what Atiku is saying. Is this uh, cheering news to the ears from those from this part of the country? Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Eastern Eye. We are live from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. It's a program that X rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. So, with everything I think we're saying, and with all the movements by Obi, Obi seem to be moving around, having meetings, presenting papers, <laughs> presenting talks. He flies out, he flies in. He's, he's a man on the move. Despite having lost the election, his popularity hasn't waned. Could this be the reason why he is the beautiful bride? Some people are already analyzing that he is still the only person that can challenge the sitting president in 2027 without qualms. Well, uh, Nigerians are now having the hardship on their side. Uh, I expect more people to come out. I expect Obi to also strengthen his position and his rhetoric and his you know, narratives. I expect uh, more people to come out because I believe that Obi may not be the best. There may be some other better people who are from the South, either South East or from the South, who are even better than the incumbent president. We want the best to come out. We want the best to come out and uh, contest so that Obi will actually Obi will actually uh, have to come out with his best. Then uh, it's not a case of Atiku. And the, uh, we are talking about Atiku because Atiku is the leading opposition. He came second and his party has more members, the National Assembly. No, but, in the optics, but in the optics, in terms of how he's intervening and on the policies, I mean, he's made a few statements, but it looks like whatever Obi says is attacked more from the presidency than whatever Atiku says. I, I agree with you. You see, uh, uh, there are people who are targets. Uh, Obi has become a target. Uh, the, what they, they can call Khalifa, uh, the person who is likely to inherit the throne. So they will all do whatever to bring him down. We know that. Um, I think we have to look around and see whether he still commands the support he had. You also have to find out somebody. Remember the short term Obi came from Africa to PDP. That in 2019. And quickly was made the vice presidential candidate. I miss all the plethora of people that were around. So there is something in Obi that I think uh, is um, you know, resonating with Nigerians, with Atiku, and with the rest of uh, Nigerians. You can see the number of votes. For the first time, they were saying there is no structure. There is no party office. There is no this. There is no money. But it doesn't give shishi. But at the end of the day, what I know is that if the opposition parties come together, if the opposition political parties come together, maybe a chance for adventure, if we become the presidential candidate, or you get anybody who is better than, I still believe that you can still get somebody who will contest with OB very, very severely before we now have a better person who will now contest. Because before you beat a champion, you have to knock him out. You don't bring somebody who will come and begin to count points. The person has to knock the incumbent out thoroughly and totally before he will now, he will now win the president. So what I'm saying is that let OB be, but I still expect other people to come. But Obi is even honing and fine-tuning all he has been doing and finding the areas of weakness and strengthening them. So Obi has become the beautiful bride. Uh, so PDP is talking with him. NMPP is talking with him. Uh, Kokwanso is also looking the way of coming together. Because the rain that is falling is beating everybody. As far as I'm concerned, nobody is safe for economy is bad. Can you imagine? You cannot buy a bag of rice. A loaf of bread is 1,500 naira. A tin of milk is 1,000 naira. What you used to buy a carton of milk when I was in secondary school. It's what you used to buy a tin of milk. So things have gone so bad. And when these things are biting like that, you can imagine what happens to the downtrodden. Everybody is hunger. Hunger is in the land. There's no pretending about that. So I'm saying that opportunity has to be given to Nigerians to make their choice. Even the South East who are saying, I want our man, in the local, our local, they have seen that, look, what you have chosen is not meeting the bill, is not delivering the goods. He was not saying, wait, 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 again, have patience. Like uh, the former president would say, have patience. 
And then somebody from uh, Edo, from the governor of Edo, told us that they are printing money to pay salaries. <laughs> and they, they tried to deny it, but it has become so obvious that the economy is a voodoo economy. Where you just print more money, it has no value. You use a basket and barrel to carry money to go and buy a loaf of bread. Just like the time the Sefa. Sefa is stronger now than Naira. So it is a choice between devil and heaven. That is going to, <laughs> going to the deep blue sea. And so Nigerians have to make their choice. That's why I say Saturday's variables. All things being equal. There is no rigging. There is no fighting Igbos from voting. There is no fighting Calabari or, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Bini people from voting. Let everybody go and vote and make their choice. I bet you, no matter how much you bring, uh, they will vote out the incumbent president. They All will right. vote out the incumbent party because mm. they are not delivering what they promised. One year down the line, and Nigerians are still suffering. Okay, so let's, let, let's take a look at what could possibly happen between now and 2027. The political parties, you have the PDP, you have the Labour Party, and you have the NNPP. But let's talk about the Labour Party real quick. They seem to be having their problems. And uh, prominent among that problem is that they're accusing their leadership of not accounting for the monies they made by the, when they had their party primaries and the monies that were paid. Julius Abure is a man under fire. Do you see OB continuing in the Labour Party? Because there are talks that he might leave the Labour Party to find another home to actually fly the flag and run for president in 2027, do you see that happening? Or do you think he should stay within the Labour Party and sort out whatever it is that is uh, going wrong with the party? And then secondly is how to harness and reinvigorate the obedient movement. I said here earlier that uh, without Obi and the Obi, uh, obedient movement, Labour is nothing. I think uh, the current party chairman, Abure, has become an embarrassment to the party. I saw the treasurer coming on air, reeling out what is going on in the finances, how she cannot even know how much in the treasury. How can it be a treasurer without knowing what is in the treasury? That's what we're saying. They said they suspend her without even investigating what she said. And if uh, Abure wants to help the party, she should have resigned. Because their interest is now to be subsumed to the interest of the party. As long as that man stays there, Obi is also being embarrassed being in that party. I'm telling you, because uh, how can he explain himself that the man who they are giving the party money they generated that they cannot be accounted for? They are talking about building a house under one year, building mansions under one year. I'm not saying that it is true, but I'm saying that there is court perception sometimes. It could be true. And party members, even the Labour uh, NLC, Nigerian Labour Congress, came out fighting. The people who also joined and helped Labour. To know whether you can the, get a thought for the supposed They say, let him come down first. And he refused to come down. So Obi has even beginning to get tainted with what happened at the party office. One man cannot be a party structure. Because that is the impression they are giving. That it's only the chairman that knows where the money is. And um, I'm happy that they did not even involve Obi in all the money in Palava. Because I was thinking maybe the man would say, after I gave Obi some of the money. But he didn't say that. All the money that he was collecting as party chairman. Why can't you allow the treasurer to be able to account to the party? A woman, a lady. All they started to was to say they sacked the woman. They said, they, you know, they expelled the woman, they suspended the woman. That is what spoils the party. As far as I'm concerned, if I was in that party, I would leave the party. Because you can't be in the party and say that you are clean. And your party has, um, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, maggots, uh, you know, moving up and down everywhere. <laughs> so because he didn't come to defend himself. I thought to defend himself, I'll resign. But he didn't. Talk about integrity. I mean the party chairman. So I am saying that they will tell you the Labour Party has been there time immemorial. But you can say that without to be in that party. If that party, if we leave that party, everybody will park and go. Because that is what breath of oxygen, breath of, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, life. I came to Labour Party. They will tell you the Labour Party was the first party in Nigeria. But uh, there are other parties that are there. SDP is there. SDP of, uh, you know, uh, Adiola yeah, and yeah. all this. But that is not what I say. Who is there? Even the, uh, the party Abiola's uh, son went, the, uh, uh, what the PRP. Uh, PRP is, it's not the party. It is the person. The person in the bus is determining the direction of the vehicle. So if they continue like that, I wouldn't advise you or anybody did to continue in that party because their chairman should have resigned. 
and say, I have not resigned, I have not defended himself, that party cannot win an election in this country. Mm. If Obi goes back there, his votes will drop. All right, so let's talk about the PDP. And with everything happening, former governor of River State and current FCT minister is still a member of the PDP and a very prominent member. And a lot of people are saying that he's just waiting in the wings to hear uh, what Nigerians will come to, to hear him in 2027. Do you think that his presence in the PDP will also create that volatility that the likes of Atiku will be trying to avoid? I've never seen in my life, I'm an adult now, everybody can see, like I've not seen anybody belonging to two political parties. I have never seen a person belonging to two political parties or serving the policies of an opposition party, praising the party and working for the party, and still saying that he's still in his party, and that they gave him, uh, you know, uh, you know, permission to go to the party. All uh, Yeso Mwike is doing in PDP as we speak now is waiting to kill the party, so that his uh, organ and his principal will go back in 2027. I think that is all he's doing. Uh, but uh, I can see that gradually, like when a drunken man enters China, China shop, he cannot be forced out. Because remember, even the current acting chairman was uh, his protege, and he's still there, he's, he's an, his ally. He put him there. Some of the governors that were clapping and dancing and wearing uniform, can you see them again? One from uh, Enugu State, one from Benue State. They were people who were zoning. One zoned the chairman of zoning of party, chairman of the party. The other one zoned the presidential. They also zoned the vice presidential zone where we could claim that he was the one who was supposed to. So all this structure, the man was controlling. But you can see that he cannot cheat. One man cannot beat the whole people. That is what happened. That they are, let us lose the position, the presidency. Instead of that, that is what happened. So I am hoping that Mwike will now mind his ministerial job and even cross over. Because you can see that he has lost his state. He's no longer, no matter, they can't reconcile again. They can, there's nothing they will do. This governor I see, you know, calling for probe for his presidency. They can never reconcile. That will be the most dangerous thing he will do. Uh, you know, they call it reconciled enemy. If you do that, it's finished. Remember, he has a minority a tribe in that river state. So he have to put his two legs down and make sure that he moves Wiko to APC and allow Wiko to be there so that he takes charge of PDP. Deputy, uh, you know, a chairman of PDP Governors Forum. He was banned from going for meeting. There are such insults that came and we hear everything. We say, what is going on? People have been supporting the party. If you support the party, you also benefited from the party. So I don't think Wiko should be in PDP and also in APC. His time will be up now. When they're not going to do congresses, when the governor will formally take over River State and the structures will be given to him, then Wike will not be anywhere to be found. He will not attend any meeting because the governor will also be in the meeting. The governor will call the shots. The governor will have the delegates. The governor will have the money. The governor will have the state. So the former, former ex, one time governor, something will have to change. So that is the fight that is on now. But I think that he said he has defeated them. The governor said, I have defeated them. And he said it publicly. And I knew it was true. So the person had defeated is Mwike. Because Mwike is the only person challenging him from being the governor that he is. As far as I'm concerned, they should finish the game and let him go to the party where he's working. You take your reward, your wages, where you are working. Go and work in your party. He has crossed over. He worked against his party. He's not, how can you come now? You want people to work for him? So you want Mwike to come and contest for And somebody in PDP will now work for him to win? It's not possible. Just oil and water cannot mix. Mamo and Dezu cannot meet. If they meet, the colors will continue in their different plasma. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, he's waiting to know whether he can cut off the neck of the, of the, uh, you know, of the snake. I think that's what we can, but he cannot wait any longer. But do, you think, over. But, but, but do you think there's a possibility, just like you put it, that he may succeed in cutting off the neck of that snake? I don't think the, that is that neck meeting. The next meeting they went last, that was my fear. But if they don't handle it well, then the house will, the roof will come down. But since they handled it well, now the governor submitted his list of, um, for Congress, the caretaker, we can submit it. Let us see which one will work. Governor is in charge of River State. There has been other former governors coming from River State. So Mwike is now a former governor. So the best thing for him is to be a minister in the APC and to also move take his uh, membership card in APC and respect himself. 
It cannot be in PDP. So do you see that do you see that happening any soon? Of course, that is what will happen. Or we will retire. Will not be in any party. Since he swore that he will never be a member of APC, he might just look at APC because nobody is going to accommodate him. Remember his fight with everybody. If he goes there, he will also continue with his um, you know, uh, domineering and dominating attitude. Because even the APC people in Rivers, he's in charge of APC, he's also in charge of PDP. But the governor has now come up to say, no, you cannot be in charge. I am there. I am in charge. So if governor takes over you know, PDP, he cannot go. He's no longer the governor. So I mentioned them are working in the wings and laughing. And other APC members, forget about what uh, the, Okocha, the chairman of APC is saying. I think he's saying it under influence of, uh, you know, the Nigerian factor. Uh, but I am sure that when PDP takes their state in River State, uh, NMPP takes Kano, APC takes Lagos, we know we have to be found. Uh, remember, FCC is no man's land. FCC is not, is not east, it's not west, it's not south. So FCC is our, the melting pot of Nigerians. So you can be there as minister or whatever. Uh, you can see PDP have been winning there until Labour came in. The first time Labour came, Labour won FCT. So, but it is P2B that won. I bet the Labour to win any councillorship election if P2B leaves uh, that party. So if uh, Abure did not resign, I will uh, pray that P2B leaves that uh, Labour party. It cannot just be fixated with Labour. Because after all, Labour is not in the first part of call. It was in uh, Apuga. Apuga. From Apuga, it came to PDP. It is from PDP that they knew that P2B has potentials. And no other place. Mm. Not in Labour. But they were looking for neither PDP nor APC. A party in the middle. So that was the, the avalanche of support they got. But now everybody can see that Labour is empty. Because the leadership of the you know, has no integrity. Cannot resign and cannot come and defend the allegations of misappropriation of funds. Campaign funds coming from all over the world. Uh, the man could not, uh, you know, have, I have not heard him saying that he used this money for that. And the treasurer said he didn't see any money. So it, it is not suspension that will cure that allegation. It is coming to defend that allegation. Right. But why are you, you know, uh, even approving something, somebody died, and this approval, I, I can hear the conversation that some things we have approved when somebody has already died and signature in the check. So the man cannot defend it. So Peter we should not be allowed to, you know, to be associated with such a party again. Uh, he tried, and you can see he didn't win. So he should come back home to his party, and so that <laughs> the PDP people will now right. will leverage on the non-performance, abysmal performance of APC, okay. and take Nigerians to where they should be. All right, that would be a good place to leave it tonight on the Eastern. I very many thanks to you, Doctor Augustine Okulia, is a policy and management consultant and former. Director of Nas National Orientation Agency, Enugu State. Thank you. I don't, I don't know why you're uh, always there. Uh, if you get there, anyway. <laughs> no, you I never mind. That. It. No, no, no. It's, uh, I always want to say it's something. National Orientation that, Agency. You know, I, director. No, no, no. no yeah, I, I don't know. For some reason, coordinator wants to come out. Uh, instead instead of the state director. No. Uh, so that's why the slowdown comes. But no problem. Yes. It's the st former state director, National Thank you very Orientation much. Agency, Enugu State. Thank you. It's my for pleasure. on the program. Thank you for having me. And that's the program tonight. We'll be back tomorrow same time. Up next is Nka with Rochelle. My name is Alex Obodo. Good night. Mm -hmm.